On this episode, I will cover working with transitions on multiple clips at the same time. Knowing how to do this can save time applying and removing the same transitions across multiple clips instead of manually affecting each transition one at a time. This is especially useful when creating a slideshow consisting of many images or a transitioning scene mock-up for a client where all the transitions need to be the same. The goal is to cover adding transitions, modifying them, and removing them quickly and efficiently. Before I continue, I need to explain how Resolve handles transition effects. Let me use a different example to stress this point. When you add a transition, you need to have a trim large enough for the transition to be applied. If you watch the Transitions Shortcut Keys chapter on my Shortcut Key Guide video, I explain this concept, but for convenience I will mention the essential part of that video. If you don't have any trim, Resolve will ask to apply a default trim automatically. While this is fine for most cases, it only limits you to a one second transition, which is distributed as half second trim intervals at either end of a clip, unless you change the default transition timing here. For this reason, a pro tip when filming, is to record at least two seconds or more before and after a scene capture to ensure you have enough trim to work with and post for transitions. So for the video clips used in making this video, I needed to increase the trim on the end of each clip to about two seconds in order to demonstrate the changes in timing of the transitions visibly. If there are some clips that have less trim than others, you will see that only some transitions increase, while others stay the same. This should be enough information for you to build upon. Let's continue. We're going to work with video for this example, but this can apply to images as well. We can simply select the clips we want to add transitions to, then use the shortcut keys Alt-T or Option-T for video or images, Shift-T for audio, or Control-T or Command-T for both audio and video. I have another video that goes over the shortcuts and more, which I have linked to on this screen and in the description. For our videos here, we'll use Alt-T or Option-T. You can also add transitions from the menu bar under Timeline. When you add the transitions, clicking on, say, the video transition, for example, you'll see the default transition is the cross-dissolve transition, which is revealed in the inspector window on the top right. DaVinci Resolve calls the default transition a standard transition. Unless you've manually changed the standard transition by opening the effects pane, clicking on video transitions, and right-clicking on any of the other video transitions and selecting set as standard transition, the cross dissolve should be your standard transition, which is indicated by the red marker. Leave this pane open for the remainder of the tutorial as we'll need it again. If you've followed along, you'll see that after you've added the transition with the shortcut, they turned white, but the clips are still selected. It's also possible that you've clicked away from the selection and now nothing is selected. Either way, if we weren't satisfied with the transition we chose, what we'd want to do is modify the transitions on a macro scale, meaning we want to make a type of global change to all the transitions at the same time. Since there is no internal command to select all the transitions simultaneously, at least not yet, we have to use a workaround. Yes, you could manually select each one if there were only a few, but we have many clips. Now, it was very important to point out the default transition because knowing that is going to be very crucial for this next step. Just in case someone out there scrubbed across the timeline and caused the playhead to clear your selection, you may want to consider turning off Selection follows playhead under timeline in the menu bar for the remainder of this tutorial. Leaving it on will cause the playhead to clear the selection and select the clips the playhead lands on. If this happened, keep watching. To select just the transitions, we need to select all the clips we applied transitions to. Next, with your effects pane open and video transitions displayed, select the standard transition and drop it on any of the transition bars, not the clips. Notice all your transitions are selected. Now in the inspector window on the top right, notice the transition tab is selected. There you will find different parameters that you can change to affect all the transitions at the same time. I'm not going to go over these transitions individually, but for brevity, 
I will adjust the duration and transition type. To preview the transition types, just hover your mouse over each transition under the effects pane on the left. If you see a transition you like, do not drag and drop a transition from the effects pane. Instead, select it from the transition type drop-down list in the inspector tab. Take note, the transitions available from the drop-down list are only the stock transitions, not third-party transitions. Dragging and dropping a transition will only apply the transition individually and cause this workflow to fail. Essentially, as long as the selected transitions are the same, you will see options in the transition tab even if the duration of each transition is different. To reset the duration of the select clips to be the same, select all the transitions, click and slide the duration to an extreme value toward the left, release the mouse button, and select a new value. After you've applied the transition you want, you can now scrub the playhead to see the results. As long as you have the selection follows playhead deselected as I suggested, you will be able to scrub through the timeline to preview the results without the playhead changing the selection. This will allow you to make changes to the transitions if you're not happy with the results of the previous selection. If you accidentally deselected your transitions, repeat the same steps but make sure you are dropping the same transitions you last used. Otherwise, the inspector window will not display the transitions tab due to differing transition types. You use the same workflow when working with images and audio. For completeness, I will show applying transitions to audio and modifying the transition length. So as before, we select all, apply the default audio transition, we select all again, lastly drop the standard audio transition indicated by the red marker on any of the transition bars, we can then make changes to the lengths and other parameters. There you go. So now we can move on to the next topic, and that is removing transitions. To remove some or all the transitions, whether they are the same type or not, select all the clips with the transitions you want to remove. Then open the effects pane on the left and click on the video transitions or audio transitions. Select any video or audio transition in the list of transitions and drop it on any of the transition bars of the selected clips, then hit delete. Again, since there is no intrinsic function that will select and remove multiple transitions automatically, this workaround will accomplish this task. If there is another workaround that is quicker and faster, it will be featured on another episode. One last note, if at any point you find that the transition tab in the inspector is not active with options to change parameters, it's because one or more of the transitions is different than all the rest. To remedy this, remove all the transitions as I showed you and reapply the transitions again. Doing so will apply them with uniformity so all the transitions are the same. To extend this concept further and as a pro tip, you can have different transition types but you may want to color code your clips to distinguish between them. And that's it, a fast and easy solution and workaround. I covered how to create transitions on multiple clips and modify them. I also showed you a workaround for reselecting the transitions and how to remove them. The main goal of this episode was to save you time when working with transitions across multiple clips. So as always, thank you for watching, and until next time, go capture that once-in-a-lifetime moment.